Welcome everyone, this is Vineet Ramnani and you are watching my tutorial on time and space complexity of recursive program. But before starting this tutorial, let me introduce myself with you. My name is Vineet Ramnani and I am currently pursuing Masters of Computer Application. Now let's come to the point. In this tutorial, we will learn how to analyze the time and space complexity of recursive program using factorial as an example. So let's begin. In this tutorial, we will see how to analyze the complexity of recursive program and we will do so by picking up a very simple example of factorial of a positive integer. Now when, we, now when we will talk about complexity analysis of program, we basically mean two things. First is the time complexity, which basically is the measurement of how the time taken by the program grows with the input and another thing is the space complexity which is the measurement of how the space or the memory consumed by the program grows with the input. So let's pick up a simple example of a recursive implementation of factorial of a positive integer and try to analyze it. So here in this slide, I have written a recursive implementation to calculate factorial of n. If n is 0, v simply returns 1. Else we make a recursive call to calculate factorial of n minus 1. Multiply it with n return output. Now let's say time taken n to calculate factorial of n is equals to t of n. When we try to analyze time complexity of fact, when we try to analyze time complexity of a program, we make an assumption that each simple operation costs us one unit of time. So if we see for n greater than zero, we must first compare it with zero, which is one simple operation. So this is got cost of one unit. Then we have a multiplication operation here that we perform after we get a return from factorial of n minus 1. So this is one unit of cost. And we perform the subtraction here to calculate n minus 1, which is another one unit of cost. So t of n is nothing but the time taken to calculate factorial of n minus 1, which is t of n minus 1 plus 3 units of cost for the simple operations. And this is true for all n greater than 0. For n is equals to 0, t of 0 is equals to 1 because we only make a comparison here and simply return. Now we have t of n is equals to t of n minus 1 plus 3. Let, let us try to reduce this expression tn in terms of our known value t0. Now t of n minus 1 can be written as t of n minus 2 plus 3. So overall expression will be t of n minus 2 plus 6 and this can be further reduced to t of n minus 3 plus 9 because t of n minus 2 is nothing but t of n minus 3 plus 3. So if I have to reduce this by a generic k then this is equals to t of n minus k plus 3 into k or 3k. Now we want to express this in terms of t0. So in that case n minus k will be equals to 0 or k will be equals to n. So this expression would finally reduce as t of n is equals to t of 0 plus 3n which is nothing but 3n plus 1 because t of 0 is 1 here. So we can see here that the time taken by this particular program for an input n is directly proportional to n. And we can also say that this is big O of n in terms of time complexity or this is an order of n algorithm. Now there are couple of different methods to calculate time complexity of a recursive program. This is one of the method in which we try to reduce Tn in terms of its base condition. Now let us try to analyze space complexity of this program and we will again this time go by an example. Let's say we want to calculate factorial of 5. So we make a call to factorial 5 and now if 5 goes on to calculate F4 recursively, what happens at this stage is that the computer says that I will save the state of this particular function called f5 which means saving all its local variable and its current state of execution in the memory and go ahead and calculate f4 first and once I am done with f4 I will come back to f5 let's say this is computer memory and these partitions are some unit in which the memory is divided so, so, so computer save this state of f5 in the memory 
and goes ahead to calculate f4. Now f4 again makes a call to f3. So f4 again is saved in the memory. f3 again makes a call to f2. And f2 again makes a call to f1. So all the states of the function are getting stacked in the memory. And this goes on until we make a call to s0. And s0 it is not make any further recursive calls. So we can see here that in our actual imprint implementation, even though we not we are not declaring any variable or assigning any memory explicitly, all the states of these functions are getting saved or stacked in the memory. And behind the scene, our program is consuming all the space. We often say that an implicit stack is growing in the memory when recursion is executing. And what is the maximum size of this stack? Is this structure which is called the recursion tree has a maximum depth of n and the maximum depth of the tree can be defined as the longest path in the tree. So if this is level 0, this is level 1 and this is level 2 and this is level 3 and this is level 4 and this is level 5 and each arrow here is one unit of length in the path. Then the maximum path, the maximum depth, depth is from L0 to L5 and it is equals to 5 units. So in this case, the maximum depth is equal to 5. And if you draw this recursion tree for any generic n, then the maximum depth is equal to n. So in this particular case, the space required by the program is directly proportional to the input n. So we said that this is an order of n algorithm in terms of space complexity. So now this stack grows to a maximum of n units in this particular example. So when we are calculating f5, it grows to a maximum of 5 units and as soon as we reach S0, then S0 simply returns 1 unit, does not grow any further and now F1 resumes and now F1 finishes and it is also removed or popped from the stack and now F2 resumes and F2 is also removed from the stack once it is finishes. So we are kind of trying to show you a simulation of how this stack is growing and decreasing as this recursive call is finishing. Now F3 finishes and F4 resumes. And finally F4 finishes and F5 resumes. Now I will remove this stack that I have written over here. Now this F5 finally finishes and return to its caller, maybe the main method. And finally F5 also finishes and is removed. Now I will also remove this F5 from the memory here because this is also finishes and return. There are a lot of other things corresponding to this program execution like the state of the main method and other function calls that get saved in the memory but we only tried to show you the memory uses by this particular recursive call. So we saw that the maximum space taken by this program for an input n is n units. So the space taken is proportional to n and that's why this is order of n algorithm in terms of space complexity. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial.